I'm currently waiting for some components to arrive for some other projects and while I'm waiting I thought I'd give a brief introduction to an upcoming project which is this. Uh, this is an LRP 300. It's, um, if you can probably tell, it's a paper tape reader and punch. Uh, this is a fairly old unit. It was designed back in the 1970s. Uh, and as ever, the uh, internal workings of this may uh, be a little bit surprising if you're um, not familiar with this type of equipment. Uh, there's more in here in terms of electronics than uh, it may first seem uh, is necessary. But it does make these very interesting to work on. And this is a particularly interesting machine. They're uh, very rare. It's got a relatively unusual punch head, um, which I think is seized up. So it will need quite a bit of work to get it up and running. But I haven't really looked at this in any detail yet. And um, just to quickly go over the controls that we have, we have two board rates. Uh, maximum, I believe, is 300. Uh, full and uh, half wave duplex mode. Uh, line and local mode, so it can be used in local mode just to do things like copying tapes. And um, we can have uh, remote control, and of course we have uh, print on and off. Uh, backspace, uh, punch feeder, punch on, uh, reader run, edit and skip. Uh, might seem a bit odd having buttons labelled edit and skip on a paper tape um, punch system. Um, but notice they're on the reader side. So the reason they're there is that when you have this unit in a system, there are various ways you could configure your system, but typically you'd have a printer and a terminal or a modem and a terminal. And so this is really used as kind of a, uh, a buffer or a source for data. So it might be you have a tape and you want to send uh, that tape or portions of that tape to the remote terminal. And that's what these buttons are for. So you can either send the entire tape, um, or if you press the edit button briefly, it will send the next character on the tape that's been fed through the reader. And if you hold the edit button down, it will send characters continuously. That is, it will continuously read the tape and send characters uh, until it gets to the next line feed character. So in other words, it will send an entire line. So in other words, you can send um, just a single character or a single line or the entire tape so it's quite a nice um, system. Now unusually for a, an old unit like this I'm lucky enough to have uh, a user manual and not only that but I have a full set of schematics so uh, very unusual for me to have this sort of information on systems I'm working on makes it uh, a lot uh, more fun, a lot more interesting and a lot more straightforward when you have this information. Now, this unit was given to me by a friend, um, so thanks for that, Peter, uh, much appreciated. And um, as I say, he also furnished me with the documents, and um, I don't know what condition this is in. I don't really have the history for it, uh, so we'll pop the cover off, have a look inside, and then in the uh, other videos in this series, we'll look at getting this uh, repaired and restored. First thing I notice is the chat box is missing. I don't have that, but I can quite easily uh, 3D print one. There's some Velcro down here, so it looks like um, someone made a, a temporary attachment for the uh, chat box they were using. It might just have been a cardboard box they had uh, stuck on there. Uh, normally there's a metal bracket that goes on here that the chat box hangs off, but uh, as I say, I can quite easily uh, make one of those up. Uh, so we'll get the cover off. Uh, I didn't loosen the screws, they were already loose. I have not yet looked inside this. Um, so we'll pop the uh, cover off, have a look inside and uh, see what we're up against. Okay, so that comes off fairly easily. Just the kind of blow moulded um, plastic cover that they used. And uh, first look inside, it actually looks quite good. There is always a worrying sign when you see something like this inside. It's obviously been throwing something around. And um, on the inside, if you're interested, uh, it's got the settings for the dip switches. 
And so looking inside, we have the tape uh, transport mechanism and punch. So this is the, um, the punch part of it. I'll, get, I'll show this in more detail in a future um, video. But the way these work is there's a series of solenoids. And what the solenoids do is they enable or disable the individual pins in the punch head. And then this motor spins around on a crank continuously. And any pins that are enabled for a particular punch um, or particular cycle um, are pushed up through the uh, tape and it punches a hole. Uh, any that are not engaged are bypassed and that particular hole is, um, is not punched. So it does this at a fairly high speed. So the solenoids are not there to punch the holes. They're only there to enable or disable the individual pins. Okay, so we then have the outlet for the chad and it comes out through here, drops out into the chad box. We have the main drive motor, which spins relatively easily. Might need a bit of attention, but not too bad. Let's spin it around the other way. We have the stepper motor under here that drives the uh, tape forward and back, and it will go forward, it will go backwards as well. You can um, rewind and backspace uh, this particular unit. Okay, that is quite tight, so I don't want to force anything because uh, I don't know quite what condition it's in, so uh, I'll leave it um, as it is for now until I've had a, a closer look at it. The tensioner seems fine, so it's not a tension thing. This is a uh, a tensioner for the um, the drive belt. Uh, we've got the control panel which is just really a series of switches and then at the front we've got the tape reader Again, that spins relatively freely so we have uh, light source and sensors and uh, of course the way this works is the light source just shines through the holes in the tape uh, tape advances, it reads the tape advances to the next reads of tape again. Uh, we've got adjustments here, these little pins move so you can change it from um, eight um, hole wide tape, so one inch tape, to the five hole wide tape. And this will handle both, there is a dip switch settings to enable you to switch between the two. Uh, and although it does have um, the capability to punch all eight holes, I believe this particular unit only supports a uh, 7-bit code. It uses the 8th bit as a parity bit. And it will need taking apart and giving a good clean. You can see it's uh, full of dirt. So there's more in here than you might first uh, expect there to be. Um, it is um, pretty much all discrete. The only large-scale device is the UART. Um, but all the rest of it, all the control, all the logic, everything else, uh, is uh, discrete, and that includes the uh, the phase generators for the stepper motors, uh, all the control logic. So everything is um, in discrete form, and and that's why there's uh, so many devices in here. Uh, and again, this is why it's so useful to have um, a schematic. As I say, I don't know if this works. Um, so what I'll do in the next video is we'll get it dismantled get the various parts cleaned up and um, we'll go from there and see exactly what we need to do to get this fully functional. Um, but certainly an interesting device. Have a look at the back. And uh, as I say it's an LRP 300V and uh, if you're interested the serial number is 10076. So most likely they started the serial numbering at um, 10,000. So this might be the 76th uh, one off the production line. Uh, I don't know how many of these were made. This particular one, I believe, was built back in around 1980. Have a quick look at some date codes. Uh, yeah, it seems um, as if it was built late um, 1980. Uh, there's not much on the bottom, just a few vent holes. And um, so overall, very nicely put together, quite nice and simple inside. If you've seen some of the other punches I've worked on, then you realise this is a very nice clean layout inside. Everything's very accessible, easy to get to, 
and uh, it should be a lot of fun to work on. Uh, if you've ever had one of these, uh, please let me know.